What's happening folks? Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. We're here to discuss the double swoop that Celtic announced today as the transfer show. I've got Chris with me for his season debut and we're here to talk about the arrivals of Aaron Moy and Moritz Jens. Chris, um, it's been a long time I think since Celtic announced two signings in the space of two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what the last uh, the last time we did that, if we ever did. Um, I mean, maybe when we signed um, Maeda, uh, Kyogo and Idaguchi, mm. maybe we announced those at the same time. Hatate, but that, was, yeah, yeah. that would be in Hatate. That's four players in, in one go. But yeah, to announce two in the space of literally 15, 20 minutes is, is remarkable and just really speaks to, I think, the position the club has taken around backing our manager. Mm. I mean, it's it's really remarkable. The last three windows that we have had as a club and we'll probably talk a little bit about that in addition to the double swoop but it's a great time to be to be a fan in terms of the continued support the manager receives and the backing that the club is giving him to continue to build his philosophy and give him the players on the park and in the squad to to really uh, continue to grow and become a better football team which is the mantra we never stop yeah, absolutely. Ange talked at the weekend after the game against Blackburn. Um, if I have, if you haven't seen his quotes, I'm sure you have by now. Um, I'll put them up on the screen for you just now. But what he said was, we're looking to get a couple in and we hope to have it done in the next seven days. And what are we? Three, four days on uh, from Saturday and we do have two signings in the door now at that time. On Saturday, I don't think we, we knew who either of them would be. The links with Moy did develop uh, pretty quickly after that, and he had been there had been murmurings that that he was he was maybe coming to Celtic. And at first, you think it could be lazy journalism because he's worked with Ange before. He's Australian. He's a free agent, um, but the deal has come to fruition. And with this one, I think it's a no-brainer uh, for Celtic. I think being on a free transfer. Okay, he's 31 years of age, but really experienced, played at a high level, but also worked with Ange before. I, I think it really strengthened the squad, that sign. What do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I absolutely agree. I, I don't, it's really a, it's like a no-lose situation, I think, for the club. You know, sure, he's 31 years old, so maybe he's entering the back half of his, you know, career as a footballer, but... To add another midfielder who might be able to play in a couple of advanced positions and gives us that extra depth within the squad, I, I don't see it as anything but a, another shrewd piece of business. Again, it's a free transfer. He's got experience playing for Ange with the Australian national team. He's played in Europe. He's played down in the English Premier League. He's obviously played back in Scotland way, way back when he played for St Mirren. Um, as a very young player, but I, I think it's a, another fantastic piece of business. Um, obviously, we've had Sorrow go out on on loan. I guess my question is, what does this mean for McCarthy? I know McCarthy sits deeper generally, but I just wonder, is there going to be another player that goes out on loan and might he be the one? I don't think it would be him, but it, yeah. it, it does beg the question of um, the number of players we have and the embarrassment of riches in terms of squad depth. In that midfield, I can't remember another time following Celtic, which has been since like the mid 90s, that we've ever had a squad like this before. I think it brings up a few questions in midfield. Obviously, I think Moy, I don't know if he's historically always been like a, a deeper line player. I, I don't think he has been. I think he's maybe been more of a sort of all action box to box type player in his time at Huddersfield from that's probably where I've seen him most. Um whether he's gonna be a rotation option with McGregor in that deeper position. But again, that throws into question, as you say, McCarthy's role in the squad, but also Idaguchi's role in the squad. And I think I think it's going to be really difficult for Idaguchi to get any sort of sustained minutes this season. I think he's the one in the midfield who we want to see more of because he's the one sign in last season that we think there could be more in there, but he had a bad time injury when he first arrived and he just couldn't he just couldn't get minutes towards the end of the season. I don't think there's any better chance of him getting minutes this season. And I think bringing in Moy um, 
again, it increases the competition. It maybe pushes him um, down one a- along with McCarthy. I know Soros going out, Beaton's going out, um, and I think Moy's a great addition. What it means for McCarthy and, and Idiguchi, though, I don't know. But to focus on the, the positives that, that Moy has come in, um, it's so important to have another player there who not only has knowledge of how Ange works, but Ange knows how he works and knows that he can fit in his style. And the one thing, I mean, I've seen a lot of debate online about the Moy signing. To be fair, I think I've seen more people talking about other people being negative about it than actual negativity about the signing, um, which just tends to be what happens these days. But I think the, the trust is there in the manager to, to get the best out of these players because of what he did last season with just about everyone who walked through the door. Yeah, and then you took the words right out of my mouth, Paul. I was literally about to say, of of all the signings, other than Idiguchi due to injury, all the signings that Postacoglu has made have made an impact, whether it's coming into the team when someone has been injured or they've come into the team and they have stayed there. I don't believe we've seen the best of Atati yet because I just believe the poor young man was running on absolute empty just based on having played a full season um, in Japan. He, and just the way you described Moy as that box-to-box player, well, that's exactly really what Hatai is, right? Just in terms of his ability to get up and down the park. But we all saw that he was laboring often in games after 50, 55, 60 minutes. I think that's just simply because he had nothing left, having played so much football in the space of about seven, eight months. So I think you're right. Idiguchi may well be down another, uh, you know, step in the ladder. But it was interesting. The only counter argument I'd have with you there, Paul, was Postacoglu said, and I remember this specifically in an interview you had, you will see more of Idiguchi next season. So that does tell me that he'll be given the opportunity to cement himself either in the squad or in the starting 11. But just to circle out the midfield, like just what a plethora of options we have. Um in the 10 roll, in the eight, the seven, the six, it's just, it's unbelievable what we have to pick from. Uh, and we're going to need it playing the number of games at a high level that we're going to have this year, hopefully trying to compete hard and as long as possible in four competitions. Yeah, absolutely. That's another thing the manager touched on at the weekend, that playing the Champions League, it's quite condensed this season because of the World Cup. So the Champions League games are in back-to-back weeks. Um, that's going to be really, really difficult for the squad. It's going to put a lot of strain on it. Just on what you mentioned there, um, rotation was a big thing for Ange last season, and it was it was almost rare that we've seen the same starting lineup from week to week. And as I say, with the Champions League, that's probably going to be even more difficult this season. So it doesn't harm us to have these options in midfield. And I know that he has said that we'll see more of Idiguchi this season. I just think it's really difficult with, with the numbers in there. Just on Moy, in terms of talking about how he might have played earlier in his career, I know that it's natural for midfielders to sort of drop deeper as they get older. They don't have the same mobility and, and maybe the same pace as they had before. But I think he's really, really going to help us. Um, I think that experience is important. I think it's it's good to have a balance. I think across the team we've got a lot of young players um, and we'll talk about another one that we've just brought in when we come to Moritz Jens, who's only just turned 23. We've got a lot of young players. We've got guys in their peak, like the likes of McGregor uh, and a few others, but it's important to have the likes of Joe Hart, maybe even James McCarthy as well. James Forrest has entered his thirties now. And Moy is another one who, who just has that experience and you expect him to be a top professional given the level he's played at. Yeah, I, absolutely. You, you hit the nail on the head, right? You're talking about key positions all across the park where we've got lots of experience and experience comes with age as well. So I, I think we're really on to, to something there with just the overall makeup of the squad and the DNA of the squad has just got hands written all over it. Um, and, you know, further exemplified by bringing in Moritz Jens, 23 years old, <laughs> six foot three, like another fantastic opportunity to bring someone in on loan with the option to buy. He's just entering the prime stage of his career. And I think he will absolutely fit 
right into Postacoglu's plans. And you'd have to imagine that it's Starfelt, Carter Vickers and, and Moritz are all competing for those two centre-back spots. I mean, we know that he's going to have either Ralston or Juranovic at right back. It's going to be Taylor or Bernabe at left back. Just so much competition for places, which just leads to fantastic training. And then training just leads to the fitness and the overall um, health of the squad as we have a very, very hectic schedule, as you mentioned, Paul, with the Champions League being so condensed this year due to the World Cup. So I'm super excited. And just I want to pay a compliment to the Celtic board. In the last three transfer windows, we have shelled out £43 million on these players. And just look at the impact that they have had on the starting 11, the success that we had last year, winning two out of the three trophies domestically. In the 21-22 season, we had almost £34 million in departures, the two big ones obviously being Edward and Christopher Iyer. So the club has shelled out at the moment £9 million on the books and that's before we even get our Champions League money so I think the club deserve a lot of credit for backing Ange um, and I fully expect that even if we're done in this window which I don't know if we are but even if we are when we get to the winner there will be money for him to spend again if need be and I think we have all over the years hoped and wished that the club would back our managers within the context of what we can afford as a club in the transfer market. We can't spend £70 million on a player. That's just not realistic for us. But if we can build a squad strong enough and deep enough to be able to compete after Champions League games where maybe we do have to rotate three, four, five players and there isn't a drop-off in performance and the product on the park, no Celtic fan will complain about what the club has been able to do to back their manager. Yeah, absolutely. I've said before, I think there's been a marked improvement in the way the club have been doing business since Ange arrived. Obviously, Don McKay was here for a really short period and it's been Michael Nicholson ever since. But I think there's been a marked improvement in the speed of the business and, and the nature of it. And I also don't think you can argue at this stage that the manager is being backed. And, and that is really important. And I think these two signings again today, particularly off the back of, I mean, how often do you hear a Celtic manager on a weekend say, I expect two in the next week and then four days later they're already here? I mean, all, for, for all my life, transfer windows have been eked out until the last minute with Celtic and you're constantly waiting and waiting and waiting. But there just feels like a different energy to the way that the club is doing business right now and I think that's really, really good. And I think it is, it's a mark of belief in the manager and listen, obviously they should have that given how last season unfolded. To, to focus more on, on Moritz Jens coming in from Laurie on season-long loan with an option to buy. Now, the mystery seems to me, because I've only seen a few short clips of him, he looks left-sided to me, but He's officially listed as right-footed and we've had a lot of talk about trying to bring in a left-sided centre-half in order to give balance and we know that Starfelt played that position for the majority of last season and he's the one that's left on the ball when a team comes to presses because obviously his left side is, is not as strongest and that can cause problems if a team gets their, their press right. So do you think it's important that we have a left-sided centre-half and can you work it well and Moritz Jens actually is left-sided enough? I mean, watching some highlights of him play, he predominantly leads with his left foot when he's tackling, but then he passes more predominantly with his right and sometimes with his left. So I, I think he's a very balanced footballer on what is, a, albeit a very small sample size in terms of highlights that you can find of him, yeah. uh, you know, online. But I, I'll be really keen to watch him play. Hopefully we can get him in um, soon to see exactly where he does play. I, for example, if... If he started a game with Cameron Carter Vickers, I would assume that CCV would be on the right side of that center back pairing and 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 Jens would be yeah. on the left. That that just seems to be his natural fit. And you you can see that in his in the highlights I found, he is on that inside left channel more often than not. So that does lead me to believe that that was something that Ange 
was looking for. But just overall, as a Celtic fan, what did we say we needed coming into this season? Sign CCV, done. Sign Jaw, done. Get another left back, done. Get another centre back, done. Like, it's a remarkable, remarkable off-season. Um, and to your point that you made, getting Jens and Moy in along with the other players um, and having them a chance to train, get used to the system, meet the rest of the players and fully embed them even over the next sort of 12 days before the first league game is a massive boost. And we're not sitting here in late August going, who are Celtic going to bring in last minute without the appropriate scouting? It was interesting listening to Jens's interview. This deal, in his eyes, he wanted to happen 12 months ago. Right? He really, he really thought there was going to be an opportunity for him to move last year. Probably similar circumstances, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen. So clearly he wanted to come to the club. The club clearly wanted him. And if he sells and does well, converting the loan to a permanent deal. And I don't know what the option to buy is yet. I don't think that information has surfaced. But if he makes a marked impact on the team and the squad, it will be a no-brainer to bolster the back centre-back position and have three quality players the question becomes, Paul, what now happens with Christopher Julian, right? Once a player who was heralded by us as Celtic fans and was probably our top centre back at the club along with Ayer. Yeah, still a fan's favourite as well, by the way. Every he, is. he came on at the weekend and he still gets, still gets a good ovation. Yeah, it's 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 a sad kind of uh, twist of fate that he got the injury and it was so significant and then... He's trying to work his way back, you know, to fitness and then now work his way into the squad and then see if he can get a regular playing time. I think if it's not going to work out in the next four to five months, I would expect if he doesn't move on loan now, then he would do in in the winter window. I just I just can't see him not wanting to play regular football at the age he is. And you need to remember, we paid seven million pounds for him. He is a, he is a quality player. Like his his performances prove that, but I just don't know where Ange or if Ange sees him as a fit for for his team. I I just don't think he does. No, I think it's I think it's quite clear that he doesn't, and I think it looks like Julian's head's maybe a bit all over the place with it. I know it's only pre season, the times we've seen him so far, but doesn't he quite look himself? And I think he's been quite unlucky in the way things went. He obviously came to Celtic. For £7 million, he had a great first season. Then we had the disaster of the COVID season. He got that really terrible injury, missed 12 months or more. And for the club's point of view, that £7 million investment, they'll never they'll never make anywhere near that sort of money back on him. And I know he scored big goals for Celtic, big goals in, in Europe, the, the one in the cup final against Rangers. But I do think it's, it's coming to an end for him. And I don't know whether that's going to be on loan, or as you say, could could it be in January? I, I do think there'll still be work being done, both on his side of things and Celtics, to, to possibly move him on. Because I don't think he's going to be happy, as you say, to sit and, and play back up. Because Carter Vickers and Starfelt are the first choice pair. Jens arriving at the club off of a poor season with Lorient is, is probably got a, he's probably got a point to prove. But I don't think... It's, it's news to MD to say that he's not going to come in and, and be a starter. So he's going to be comfortable maybe sitting on the bench, being a rotation option, being a backup option and, and, and trying to prove his point. But Julian isn't. And I think he's probably a big earner, a, a decent earner as well. So I think it makes sense for, for all parties if Julian can move on. And it's maybe unfortunate because, as I say, that first season he looked like he was going to be a really good player for Celtic over a number of years but the way things have transpired it's not really it's not really happened um, on Jens do you think it's important obviously in terms of his profile having just turned 23 but off the back of a poor season with Lorion, do you think that helps Celtic because he's got a point to prove oh absolutely there's nothing better than any professional athlete who has a fire in their belly because either the team they were on or this, you know, other circumstances just meant that, you know, they didn't have the best season collectively. 
maybe individually he felt he performed well, but he wants to be in an environment where he's going to be driven. Um, and I think that's the one thing we know that Pastor Coglu, he demands impeccable training standards, impeccable standards within games. And I do believe he'll be given an opportunity to earn pretty regular playing time. Uh, I, I can't believe he wouldn't be. As much as we all love Cameron Carter Vickers, and I think Starfelt won that small subsection of Celtic support over by the end of last season. We all know that if a player comes in and takes the shirt, they're going to get to keep it until they prove otherwise. So he will be highly motivated. And I think that absolutely works in Celtic's favor. And again, signing another player in their early to mid twenties, just the right type of people to be bringing into the club um they've got an opportunity to prove themselves they feel they have a point to prove that's just a winning combination in my eyes in terms of bolstering the squad and hopefully those types of players Jens being the one specifically that will push Starfelt and CCV uh, it's it, it can only be a good thing yeah I agree I agree I'm just thinking about someone like Moritz Jens arriving in Glasgow today and and uh, thinking that this this weather is normal because I'm sitting here absolutely stupefied because it's 32 degrees. Um, it's certainly no normal. I'm sure Aaron Moy can tell him that because uh, he's used to, to being in Glasgow. Anyway, Chris, two signings in. Do you think we'll get any more? We've, we've talked about how good the business has been so far, getting the big signings in Carter Vickers and Jota, sorting out left back. And I think when Anne's made those comments at the weekend, there was a lot of debate about where those positions might be. But I think most people thought it would be a centre half and, and possibly a midfielder. That is what it is. Do you think we're going to get any more? Or do you think we need any more as well? That's that's really the question, is do, do we need any more? If, if I was to look overall at competition for places, I guess... If Julien was moved on, might be a fraction of, of the cost, say three, three and a half million. If you could somehow move a Jetty on, because I really don't think he features in the strike force, and maybe you can recoup 50% for him, so two and a half million. Now you got six million back for those and two players. Clear, clear 25 grand off the wage bill. <laughs> and clear the 25,000 a week off the wage bill. So then you look at the maybe the only other place that we could conceivably strengthen some more is up front. So if a Jetty went out, you've got Kyogo, Maeda, who can play in three positions, really. We know he can play left wing, right wing, and he has played through the middle. You know Jota can play left and right. And Forrest has even <clears throat> played both. He'll be, I think, mainly a squad player this year. I don't think you'll yeah. see him. He'll be a rotational player to come in and fill those games after Champions League weekends. So then you've got Kyogo and you've got Jakamakis. So do you need one more striker? That might be the only other place where we might look to bring someone else in. I haven't even mentioned Mikey Johnston. Right? We don't can't stay fit. Understandably. Don't know if Ange really feels like he's part of his long-term plans. Yeah. So is a striking option potentially one more place that, that we look to? But that would be being greedy, if I'm perfectly honest. I, I think the difficulty with a striker is Kyogo, Kyogo for me, is, is the number one starter. Yakimakis has, has proven that he is a goal scorer and he, he's got a very different skill set to Kyogo and that helps us in terms of versatility depending on opponent and, and, and different things like that I just don't know what profile of player you get that's happy to come in and be third third like third in the pecking order it's probably a young player um, maybe under the age of 21 maybe even 20 or younger who is comfortable with okay I'm at Celtic and I'm third choice I, I'm, I'm just trying to work my way up the pecking order get minutes wherever I can because if Kyogo and Yakimakis stay fit, I don't think there'll be very many minutes for another player as a central striker at all. Um, but I know that's one that a few people have commented on when we've been doing these transfer videos. A few people have said, do we maybe need another striker? And with the Jordan Larson links, 
more than a few people said someone like that would be ideal. Another one who can play across the front three in a number of positions. Um, but that whether that was ever on the cards is debatable anyway, but it certainly looks like it's it's not going to happen now if it ever was. And he's not someone, having played at level, he's played that, being at the age he's at, who would have been happy to come in and be, be third in line. So I think that's a difficult one for the club. And I feel like if I think about it, I feel like that's us up front. I think we've got everything we need because of the versatility of the likes of Maeda, uh, who can deputise through the middle. We know it's not his strongest position, but I think he's almost the third choice striker. I think the third choice is to, to move Maeda through the middle and then get the versatility out of Jota, who can play in both sides. Abad is there on the right-hand side, Forrest is there as well. So I think we've got plenty of options there. And I think last weekend... When Ange made those comments, I thought if we get another two in, I think we'll be very, very close to being done. Yeah, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Uh, wholeheartedly agree with you there, Paul. I think we're in a really good spot. My honest opinion at this stage is it's more probably likely that players are going out and whether that's we, we sell them. Um, and at this stage, we've got Barkas out on loan. We've got Soro out on loan conceivably Julien was close but it fell through so is there another option between now and and the window closing to make that permanent for him so he gets actual football minutes um and then obviously there could be a potential to to move a jetty out either permanently as well um to get him some minutes um it's it's a remarkable position that we find ourselves in you know two years on from the covid season we're defending champions again we're finally building from a position of strength, which is what we did not do following securing nine in a row. And between that and COVID and the way the whole club was managed from top to bottom cost us the 10. But now we're building again from a position of strength while our neighbours across the road are losing their best players and they won't get to spend all that money because they need it to cover their financial pressure. So... We're building from a position of strength. I'm very excited about the season ahead and can't wait to see what Postacoglu does once again with the football and the brand on the park. Absolutely. I think everyone would agree with that, mate. That's a good point to end on. I'm going to go and try and cool down because this studio is like a sauna. Um, so thanks for your time tonight, Chris. Like this video, comment with your own thoughts on today's transfers for Moy and Jens below. And as ever, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you tomorrow on some form of content from Warsaw for the Boric testimonial. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that across all our social media. Um, and thanks for watching.